Mary Buffett with Sean Sear. Seven Secrets to Investing Like Warren Buffett. Narrated by Thomas Florio. Warren Buffett is one of those few investors who've become household names. He earned that status by making his first investments in the 1950s and growing early successes into a portfolio worth billions upon billions of dollars. Buffett is one of the world's wealthiest people, so it's no wonder that people often ask him for advice and hints. After all, who wouldn't want to know the secrets to the sort of decades-long success he's achieved? One person who's had the chance to study and understand Buffett's methodology, or as it's become known, Buffettology, is his former daughter-in-law, Mary Buffett. Together with Sean Sia, another passionate Buffettologist, she lays down the seven most important secrets of creating your own long-lasting, successful stock portfolio. That's why you'll get seven blinks. Seven secrets, seven blinks. Makes sense, right? Blink one of seven. Good habits, such as saving money and avoiding debt, are key to creating wealth. Chances are, if you're looking for tips on generating wealth, you're probably not expecting a lesson on making good habits. But that's exactly what the first secret to investing like Warren Buffett is all about. You need money to invest money. So before we even get into picking the right stocks, we need to talk about setting aside the funds you're going to use. Even though saving doesn't come naturally to all of us, it's one of the most important secrets of success. This is why you need to make a habit of it, something you'll practice steadily and consistently. But where do you start? Well, step one is to put away 10% of your earnings. Transfer this money into a separate savings account or put it somewhere else that's out of reach. You don't want the temptation of dipping into this pot. Once you've got the savings account set up, start to build on this money. Add to it regularly with each and every paycheck. If 10% sounds a little steep right now, here's another idea. Incremental savings. This week, put away $1. Next week, $2. Week 3, $3, and so on. It may not feel like much to start with, but if you keep it up, in a year's time, you'll be stashing away $52 a week. Starting out small and gradually increasing your commitment is a tried and true way of forming a positive habit. It's all about keeping things manageable and consistent. Many people jump out of the gate with goals that are too ambitious, only to stumble and fall a short while later. That can be very discouraging, a surefire way to kill off a good habit. But what if you're being steady and methodical? What if you're seeing that savings pot grow and grow? How much should you aim to save up? A good rule of thumb is to create a solid emergency fund enough to cover your costs for some time in case your source of income is cut off. And then, on top of that, it makes sense to arrange an insurance policy, such as an accident and disability plan. The authors recommend a plan that'll cover 10 years of regular income, just in case. Spending money is easy. Anyone can do it. Wealthy people save money, put it aside, and grow it. There's a reason why people who win the lottery and become overnight millionaires squander their fortune. They haven't developed the kind of habits that can keep them wealthy. Blink 2 of 7. Buffett's winning strategy is built on the principle of value investing. Let's say the fabric of reality gets twisted in some crazy manner, and you find yourself in a universe where you can buy a dollar for a quarter. How many dollars would you want to buy? The obvious answer is, as many as you could. Now, we probably won't start jumping across universes anytime soon, but this scenario isn't far off from what you can do when you make a really good investment. In fact, keep this story in mind as we talk about the second secret, value investing. Some investors merely speculate, but others, people like Warren Buffett, have a methodology. They take well-defined steps to determine two things. One, a company's true value, 
and two, whether the price of a firm's stock matches that value. And this, right here, is what value investing is all about. Warren Buffett is, of course, the kind of investor who's keenly aware of a company's value. In fact, he learned all about the principle of value investing from one of the gurus, Benjamin Graham. Graham spent decades teaching value investing at Columbia Business School, where Buffett learned the ropes in the early 1950s. You probably don't have years to dedicate to investment studies, but that's okay, because here's the short version. By studying the market and looking at the right numbers and reports, you can find undervalued stock. Simply put, this means that you can identify businesses whose value is greater than what their stock sells for. Let's return to our alternate universe. It's rather like that scenario, isn't it? You've got a company whose stock is worth a dollar, but its going price is only a quarter. When you can spot this value discrepancy, you know you found a company that maybe, just maybe, is worth investing in. Of course, there's no such thing as a guarantee when it comes to the stock market, but there have been plenty of studies into value investing. They show that investing in undervalued companies is a strong strategy. It certainly beats speculating or going with a gut feeling. Now, it is possible that an undervalued company can become even more undervalued after you've invested. This could end up costing you money. But this is where another of Buffett's strategies comes in. Patience. More often than not, the company's true value will be recognized, and then your investment will bring you a healthy return. Blink 3 of 7. Use logic and your own interests to find investment ideas. All right, so let's say you've now set aside some money for value investing. But there are a whole lot of businesses listed out there. Where do you even start looking? Well, what are you interested in? Seriously, ask this question. It's a great place to start. Warren Buffett is famous for refusing to invest in any business that he isn't familiar with. This is why he tends to stay away from computer and internet-related companies. Instead, he invests in brands like Coca-Cola and Kraft Foods, and businesses like banks, airlines, and American Express. Buffett understands the companies whose stock he buys. This means he knows what they offer, how they operate, and he can see the value of their product or service. Buffett has used the phrase circle of competence to describe the sweet spot of where his interests and investments merge. You can figure out your own circle of competence by asking some basic logical questions about your interests and your understanding of business success. Start by listing the kind of businesses you've worked for. What industry are you in? Does your company have clients that specialize in certain areas? Has your career given you insight into any particular industries? Next, list the businesses you tend to spend money on. What are your favorite brands? What stores or companies get your return custom? Maybe check your bank statements to see what names keep popping up. Finally, write down your areas of expertise and your hobbies. Are you a genius when it comes to cooking? Do you have a passion for rock climbing? Are you the best computer programmer you know? It's okay to admit it. Just jot all these things down. Now, when you put these three lists together, you should be able to create a kind of Venn diagram that answers these three questions. What do I love to do? What am I good at? And what do I spend money on? Through this exercise, you should be able to identify some industries or categories of business that fall within your circle of competence. And that, right there, is the answer to this Blink's opening question. This list is where you start looking for companies to invest in. Blink 4 of 7. Some companies have built up economic moats that help them withstand changes in the marketplace. We've reached blink number four, so let's move on to the fourth secret to investing like Warren Buffett. That secret is economic moats. What on earth is an economic moat, you may ask? 
Well, Buffett didn't just follow the principles of value investing by identifying undervalued companies. He also looked for stocks that came with a buffer against losses. That buffer is what he described as an economic moat. As you'll see, this is another thing you can look out for when seeking good investments. Obviously, we can't predict the future. But one thing's for sure, there'll be plenty of ups and downs along the way. Some businesses offer a product or service that has the potential to resist all the bulls, bears, and cultural trends that come and go. This is the kind of protection that an economic moat provides. Take Coca-Cola, for instance. It's a brand that's withstood depressions and world wars. It continues to appeal to generation after generation. Others, like Pampers, have become so ubiquitous, we even mix up the brand name with the product. Instead of saying, I'm going out to get diapers, we'll say, I'm going out to get Pampers. Coca-Cola and Pampers are companies with an economic moat. Another detail to look out for is this. Can a product set a higher price point and still win over customers? Nike can. So can McDonald's and Burger King. These are companies that will likely stay on top for a long time. There's another sign of an economic moat, and that is having an economy of scale. It's often associated with having an efficient, low-cost production model. Companies that have developed it can undercut competitors by offering more affordable prices. Perhaps the best current example of this is Amazon. When you shop on Amazon, you'll often find low prices that simply can't be beaten elsewhere. Still, economic moats may not last forever. This is especially true when it comes to technology. So another question to ask is this. Is the company's product or service too dependent upon innovation to survive? Right now, you may think that the iPhone has established a good economic moat, but the reality is, its popularity is dependent upon Apple staying ahead of the game. It's entirely possible that, in the not-too-distant future, a new and more innovative product could arrive, making the iPhone obsolete overnight. Blink 5 of 7. Learn the language of business and you'll become adept at recognizing good value investments. At this point, you should have a decent idea of the kind of businesses that Warren Buffett looks for when making a new investment. So let's get into the more technical part of value investing, the nitty-gritty of determining a business's true value. The fifth secret to investing like Warren Buffett is understanding the language of business. And this means learning to read financial statements. This may not be everyone's cup of tea, but don't be put off, especially if you want to make the kind of smart investments that Warren Buffett makes. To get a grasp of the basics, let's run through a quick scenario. Imagine you've discovered a business that looks, at first glance, like a good investment opportunity. It's called Jane's Construction Company. You're going to want to check its three main financial statements the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. How do you get them? Well, a quick Google search should suffice. Let's start with the balance sheet. It shows a company's true equity, that is to say, its net worth. You can work it out by adding up all the company's assets and subtracting all its liabilities, including debts. Focus on the company's debt-to-equity ratio. Say Jane's construction company has $500,000 worth of debt alongside equity of $1.3 million. That makes for a 38% debt-to-equity ratio. That's not a bad result, actually. You often find companies that have a debt-to-equity ratio of 100%, or even worse. Then look at the income statement. It'll show you the company's net profit, which is its income minus tax and expenses. The key here is return on equity. Here's how it works. Imagine Jane's equity in 2015 was $1 million. Now, the income statement shows that in 2016, it turned a net profit of $520,000. This means its return on equity is 52%. This is great. In fact, anything above 15% is pretty good. 
Finally, you'll want to examine the cash flow statement. It shows us how the company uses its money. Does it have enough cash for day-to-day -day operations? Does it pay its debts? Do shareholders get dividends? Basically, you want to see consistent, positive cash flow year after year. All businesses sometimes go into negative cash flow, driven by big purchases or perhaps sales cycles. But generally speaking, you want to look back at years of records and see a positive cash flow history. Blink 6 of 7. Know when to invest by comparing net current value to the stock price. Let's take a breath. Putting a company's financial statements under a microscope is no easy task. But once you know what to look for, it'll all become second nature. But even if a company's financials show that it's healthy and profitable, that alone doesn't tell you when to invest. That's where valuation comes in. As a general rule of thumb, you want to buy stock when its price is low and just about to go up. Key to this is the net-net method. It was developed by Benjamin Graham, Buffett's teacher, and it's the backbone of all value investing. Net-net is about comparing two numbers. One is a company's net current asset value, or NCAV. Sometimes people refer to it as liquidation value. It's a highly technical term, sure, but it's not that hard to grasp. In fact, an explanation is coming right up. But for now, just remember NCAV. The other number, the one you want to compare with NCAV, is the net current asset value per share. Let's go back to NCAV, or liquidation value. Liquidation is what happens when a company sells everything to pay off its debts. At that point, what's left goes to shareholders. And that's all NCAV is, that leftover. The good news is, we already know how to get this number. It's on the balance sheet we've already examined. Let's go back to Jane's construction company. The balance sheet would say that the firm's total current assets stand at $700,000. Total liabilities, on the other hand, including all the debt, add up to $650,000. This means that Jane's NCAV is $50,000. All we now need to do is calculate NCAV per share. For this, you'd need to tally up all the outstanding shares for the company, which are those stocks that are held by shareholders, employees, banks, and so forth. Let's say Jane's company has 20,000 outstanding shares. Dividing 50,000, the NCAV, by 20,000, shows that Jane's NCAV per share is $2.50. At this point, the question becomes, what is the current price per share in Jane's construction company? Are stocks currently being sold for less than $2.50? If so, then the company is undervalued. Now, this is already a good sign for a possible investment opportunity. But the net-net method goes one step further. Benjamin Graham believed that the best opportunities come with a 33.3% margin of safety, which means that the current price per share should be one-third less than the NCAV per share. So if stock in Jane's company is being sold for around $1.60 per share, go for it. Blink 7 of 7. Follow five simple rules to manage a diverse and well-protected portfolio. You're about to find out the last secret to investing like Warren Buffett. After all that math, let's get down to some more straightforward business. Portfolio management. And that's right. Secret number seven is all about managing your portfolio in a wise and responsible way. Let's start with accepting a simple truth. No one is right all the time. Period. So managing a diverse portfolio is a smart way of giving yourself room for error. It allows for some investments to stall or fail while still maintaining overall profitability. Warren Buffett has hundreds of private businesses in his portfolio, but he also holds shares of more than 40 publicly listed companies. As Buffett himself says, 
Diversification is protection against ignorance. There are five rules of portfolio management, and the first one is fund allocation. Before you start investing, figure out how much money you're going to use now and how much you'll set aside for future investments. This can take some cold-headed thinking. In 1969, Buffett basically stepped out of the investment game for four years because he saw that everything was overvalued. So when the stock market crashed between 1971 and 1974, his money was safe. Let's move on to rule two. Never put more than 10% into any single stock. Pretty straightforward, right? Diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Rule three is all about ranking your prospects. Let's say you're interested in 20 companies. Take some time to rank them in order of how confident you feel about each one. This will give you a simple strategy. The higher the ranking of a company, the more of your money it deserves. When that company becomes undervalued, you'll know exactly what to do. Rule four, review your portfolio at least once a year. Keep an eye on the annual and quarterly reports your companies release, and if you notice worrisome trends, make adjustments. And finally, we come to rule five. It tells us not to sell based on price alone. A good company is more than just its stock price. Think of an investment like an employee. Ask yourself this, would you fire someone just because they're having a bad day or even week? Amazing companies can experience big price drops from time to time. In fact, Buffett loves to invest when a strong company's stock price takes a dip. And there you have it. Seven secrets to investment that should help you get started in making wise and well-informed investments. They may not make you a multi-millionaire overnight, but they'll give you a good start. The rest is up to you. You've just listened to our blinks to Seven Secrets to Investing Like Warren Buffett by Mary Buffett and Sean Sia. The key message in these blinks is that there are seven secrets to investing like Warren Buffett, and they start with forming good habits around money. These habits, like putting away a certain amount each week or each month, are meant to establish savings and set aside a responsible emergency fund. Other secrets are all about value investing, ways to find undervalued companies and invest in them. Buffett also uses his circle of competency when making investments, which has ensured that he understands how each company operates. He's also invested in companies with an economic moat, which makes them capable of withstanding economic downturns, and has kept a diverse portfolio. And here's some more actionable advice. Be careful with credit cards. One of the first secrets is to avoid debt. An easy mistake to make is to rely on credit cards. That's a surefire way to lose track of your spending and, yes, ultimately get into debt. In fact, it's no secret that when we regularly use credit cards, we often end up spending more than we otherwise would. So make it a habit of paying with cash whenever you can. And when you do use a credit card, be sure you pay your bill in full and on time. <laughs>